Good afternoon and welcome to the Tameside Reporter Sports Show. We'll be reflecting on Richie Wellens' first two games as first team manager of Oldham Athletic, as well as previewing all our team's fixtures in the FA Trophy and hearing from Glossop Joint Manager Paul Phillips. <laughs> So we'll start this week by looking at Glossop North End, who fell to their first defeat in eight games last weekend against Trafford. The Hillmen found themselves two goals behind by the eighth minute, but levelled matters through Jude Oyebo and Courtney Meppen Walters. However, Trafford went on to win the game thanks to a goal through captain Steve Mason. They also played Trafford on Tuesday in the Manchester Premier Cup, losing 2-1. Mark, you were at the game. Yep. Did Glossop deserve to lose? Yeah, I think overall they did. Uh, just weren't up to scratch on the day. Uh, Paul Phillips agreed with me following the game when I spoke to him. Just said they weren't at the races, really. But like you said then, uh, one loss in eight league fixtures. Not too bad, still looking good. However, they are in search of a keeper because Russ Saunders has left the club. Well, as Mark said there, he spoke to Paul Phillips after the game on Tuesday. So let's see what he had to say. Right, so Paul, defeat in the Manchester Premier Cup tonight. Uh, what was your verdict on the game? I thought, to be fair, I thought we defended reasonably well as a back four, as a three. I thought midfield was non-existent. I thought Kane Nickman come on and prove what he can do. Um, probably showing the lads up who uh, think they're higher up the pecking order than him and obviously that'll uh, I'll alter now. Um, I just think over the two games, we've probably lost it in midfield. They've been better in the midfield. That's created chances for them and stopped us getting in their box. And I think all in all, we've got to look at that department. Just don't think it was good enough. So you mentioned Kane Hickman then. Do you think he'll become a main player in the future? I think he's come on and done well tonight. I think he's got to sustain in that, to stay in the team and stay in the squad. But I think we'll give people chances tonight. And apart from him, I thought young Liam come on and look, look quite lively up front. Apart from that, I can't really say. I think I felt sorry for Courtney at the end. He made a mistake. I thought he was outstanding. I suppose the other two, Matty Russell and Adam Jones, at the back. Um, but like I say, it's, people have had the chances tonight because we've got a big game Saturday. We've had a lot of games coming up and they've just not taken them. You made a few decent saves yourself. Uh, you've played in net for the past three games now, I think. Uh, what's the thinking behind that? To be fair, Russ has, in a, in a way, said he's fell out with football. Um, so it was a wage that really we couldn't afford that was after him to find. So I've gone back in, I've tried to get, get a bit fitter. Um, if someone comes about that we can change it and it can come in and it's at the right price. Same again, we'll, we'll, we'll make the decision, but I don't think I disgrace myself like this Saturday. Poor, obviously it was like three goals and we let two in tonight, but I don't think there's much I could do about them. I thought they defended quite well, it was just a matter of different people making different mistakes. So we're about a quarter of the way through the season now. Are you quite happy with the way you performed and uh, your position in the table at the moment? Are we third top or third bottom? Third top. Are you sure? Yeah. All right. No, it's just that it feels like it sometimes when I come here. Um, it's, listen, we're not happy with the performances, but if you look at the season overall, we've never had a settled team. We've probably had 14 players out at different times and I'm not, listen, I'm not making mis uh, excuses for that but we're third in the league with, with a team that we put get together 15 weeks ago and when I hear some comments and see some people saying stuff it, it riles me because the lads in there don't go out to lose but sometimes we've just not got the quality to do that because you're playing against players like today players that played in the conference players that played in the football league players that are getting paid a lot more money than them so they're not going out to lose but it's not an endless pot, we've got to try and keep the quad together. Two, two seven days notices have come in today for two big players that play for us. And they're doubling the wages if they, if they do go. So that's the way, you've just got to try and shore that up. But hopefully we keep hold of them. But they've got to give us a bit of patience, like I said. We're third in the league, I think South Shields and Bamber Bridge are above us. I think Bamber Bridge are obviously got a game left so we can catch them up. South Shields, are, I think South Shields will go on to win it because the wage bill and the team they've got on this crowd to get in then. I think it's, it's, it's fourth and five after that. So you've had some bad luck in the cup competition so far. You've got Matlock Town in the FA Trophy on Saturday. Uh, they play in a division above you. You're going into this game of confidence? Yeah, we're going as underdogs. Obviously, they're a good team. Played them quite a few times with um, our previous cup, Ashton. Um, so it'll be a tough game. It's always a decent team. 
obviously I think the mid-table will have them, we've had them watch that, they all know what we're going into, but we're going to it as underdog and hopefully we can surprise a few people, which we have done over the uh, past few weeks. So is this a competition you're going to prioritise now? We've got to, like, no disrespect to Manchester Cup and the, uh, the League Cup, but we haven't got a squad capable of fighting on our fronts, so you've got to prioritise and I think tonight you're seeing probably eight, eight changes, nine changes from what it was on Saturday. And we need to do that because we've got to try and protect players who've played a lot of football. So this weekend, Glossop are in FA Trophy action against Evo Stick Premier outfit Matlock Town. Paul Phillips has said he's going to prioritise this competition now because it's the last cup competition Glossop are involved in after being knocked out of the Manchester Premier Cup, FA Cup and League Cup. So Lee, do you fancy the chances? I mean, yeah, Matlock aren't doing great this season now. I think they're in 14th position. I think they've won seven, drawn three and lost eight. And let's not forget, they've both managed at this level before, so they'll know what to expect. Mm, yeah, I agree with them. Um, obviously, Paul Phipps and Steve Alford have managed at Ashton United. Did really well in that division. Took Ashton to three consecutive playoff feet. So, will have played Matlock a good number of times. So, like Lee said then, they will know what to expect. So let's go to League One now and talk about Oldham Athletic where Richie Wellens took charge of his first game as proper manager at Oldham. That was at MK Dons last weekend and it ended in a 4 all draw. Oldham were 4-2 up with just 10 minutes left but conceded two late goals. I mean Mark, a draw at MK Dons is a good result to yeah. be fair but Richie Wellens will be disappointed with them late goals. Well yeah, any other point of the season a draw is a great result. Always hard to go down to Stadium MK and get a result. But to be 4-2 up in the final 10 minutes, then to concede two goals, especially one in the last minute, must have been heartbreaking. But yet again, they're still in the right direction, aren't they? And listen, I think there were a lot of complaints about sort of the football that Sheridan was playing. I don't think there can be yeah. many complaints anymore. Scoring four yeah. goals down at MK Dons are a good side. Absolutely. And you just look at, so look at some of the players that were under John Sheridan that weren't performing, mm. but they're now performing for Richie Wellens. Craig Davis, seven goals this season. Owen Dole scored down there as well, along with Peter Clark. So, like I said, it's looking good. And, uh, yeah. Well, there were no complaints on Tuesday nights after Oldham beat local rivals Berry 2-1 thanks to a 94th minute winner from Aaron Holloway. Lee, Owen Doyle also scored again in that game. That's nine goals now in the season. Do you think Preston are going to try and sort of recall him in January? I mean, yeah, what a sign he's been. He's been fantastic, hasn't he? I do think it's a worry that he will go back to Preston in January. I don't know how long the deal's for. I don't know whether it's mm. a 12 month or a six month. But listen, if Oldham can keep him, that's going to be instrumental in their campaign. Jack Byrne as well, on loan from Wigan. We don't know how long his deal is. I think those two have been key signings for Oldham this year. And Jack Byrne, so sorry, Jack Byrne said uh, online recently that he's praised Richie Wellens' style of play, hasn't mm, he? Yeah, he seems to like it, so. Yeah. It's all working well for them. Well, it's certainly suiting Oldham, who are back in League One action this weekend against Scunthorpe at Boundary Park. Scunthorpe have been a bit inconsistent of late, losing three, drawing one and winning one of their last five games. So, do we think Richie Wellens is going to carry on this unbeaten run? I do, yeah. They've got momentum behind them, Lee. Yeah, I mean, they're at home against Scunthorpe, where we know are a great side. Rich Wands has got them playing good football, and now they seem to be getting the results as well, so I'm hopeful. Mm. No, but you've got to look at Scunthorpe's campaign last season, reach the playoffs, were beaten in the semis by Millwall, so I'm sure they'll be wanting to challenge once again, so maybe it will be a difficult time. Well, they're in a bit of a similar position to Oldham. Yeah. They started the season mm. quite poorly. Yeah. Oldham have turned it around. I'm sure Scunthorpe will want to do the same. Yeah. So we'll move back into the same side now and talk about Curzon Ashton, who made it back-to-back -back league victories with a 2-1 win over Boston United last weekend. Mark, that lifted the Nash into the playoff places. A fantastic achievement. Yeah, great achievement. Look at some of the teams that are below them. Giants such as Stockport County, yeah. York City and Kidderminster Harriers. So looking at Curzon's budget, they are overachieving at the moment. So uh, like I keep saying, week in, week out, I'm saying they're going for the playoffs. I'm you saying have been it. saying it since yeah. the start of the season, to be fair. Yeah. It's looking like you might be right. I'm, I think I'm starting to believe. <laughs> I think I'm going to be right come the end of the season. I think a lot of people will be surprised but like I've been saying since the start of the season I firmly believe that they will be challenging come the end of the season. Well Curzon will be looking to make it three league wins in a row at Gainsborough Trinity this weekend. Gainsborough currently sits in 18th place but despite that league Curzon still needs to be quite wary. Yeah Gainsborough are a lot better team than their position suggests. I think they came from 2-1 down Last weekend, yep. you know, that yeah. shows character, great, what we always say is important at these levels. Curzon on a bit of a high, I think they could get caught short here, so they need, mm. to be on, need to be on the best game. Looking at Curzon's form recently, it wouldn't be too surprising to see some bigger clubs approach John Flanagan, agree? 
Yeah, I mean, he's done a fantastic job, hasn't he? I mean, yeah. how long ago was it they were the smallest team in Tameside? Now they're the highest. Four or five years ago. Now they're the highest like ranked team in Tameside. It's been, it's been a bit Do of a Do you think John will want to see that project through with Curzon? Because he's been oh, there yeah. for years now. And he's yeah, I the think he has a love for Curzon Ashton. Obviously, he's built the club around his philosophy. They've got a great junior section. They're looking at putting a new artificial pitch in there. They obviously had that FA Cup run last season. So I think that is all part of the project. I'm sure he'll want to see it through. And we always hear Natalie Atkinson, the CEO, saying how much she wants it to be a league club yeah. within. 10 year plan something like that so i think there's every opportunity mm. the only worry is if he does move on to a bigger club who's going to replace him and they ca can they build on that success absolutely well we'll move across town to ashton united now who were involved in a 3-0 draw last saturday against shaw lane matt chadwick's last minute penalty earning ashton a point they were involved in another 3-0 draw on tuesday night against farsley celtic but this time this time it was farsley with the late equaliser so mark Contrasting fortunes for Ashton within 72 hours. Ecstasy and agony, you know. Jordi Banning will be absolutely devastated to have conceded a 94th minute equaliser against Farsley on Tuesday. Had Ashton won that game, they'd now be sitting in fourth mm. place and looking good for a title shot. As it is, I think they're in seventh spot, but it still looks good to me, especially with all the injuries they've had. They've done remarkably well. Well, this weekend, Ashton are in FA Trophy action against Frickley at home. Lee Ashton are out with the FA Cup this season, so the FA Trophy is a good chance to make some money and, you know, perhaps get to Wembley. Yeah, I mean, I think there's just over three grand on offer for this game, mm. so that'll be a welcome boost with all the injury problems around the club. Maybe that's, a, maybe that's another player. Yeah. Who knows? Like we say, we do want a Wembley trip. We, we, I think we yeah. all want to go down to Wembley to see one of our teams play there. So I think Ashton United have got a great chance. I mean, they started the season fantastically. Like you say, if they won that game at the weekend, they'd have been in fourth position. Yeah. You know, it's a fantastic season considering all the off-field off problems mm. that they've had. And I think that a trip to Wembley would be well deserved. Mark, we hope one of our teams at least can get to Wembley well, yeah, in FA Trophy. For, for purely selfish reasons, we all want to go to Wembley, don't Absolutely. we? Absolutely. I went a few years ago when Gossett played in that FA Vars final. They unfortunately lost, but the experience was great. So hopefully one of our teams around here can replicate that. Well, we'll move across to Bower Fold now and talk about Staley Bridge Celtic, who beat Barwell 4-2 last weekend to move up to 19th in the table. And finally, Mark, it's starting to look like Staley Bridge can look up the table rather than over the shoulders. Yeah, it is. It's looking positive at the moment. I think Steve Burr's philosophy is kind of paying off now. Although Celtic do need to improve their away form, they've only picked up one point this season. So if they can build up some momentum, uh, pick up a few wins, then they'll push up the table, no problem. So Celtic are also in FA Trophy action this weekend. They travelled to Prescott Cables. Well, what can Celtic expect from that Prescott side? A much improved Prescott side from last season. I think they finished 16th last season, mm. but they're in fifth now. Mm. I know they did get dock some points for fielding an eligible player, which is obviously a bit disappointing. But I certainly think they've got to be on yeah. there on the on the A game this weekend against a good Prescott side. Well, next Tuesday, Staley Bridge are back in league action, but they make the long trip to Workington Town, and that's a pretty awful trip to make midweek, isn't it, Mark? Yeah, it is. Two and a half hour journey. So players obviously will have to take half a day off work. They'll be getting back in at about 2am the following morning. So as we mentioned on last week's show, it takes a lot of commitment. Workington have obviously got into the playoffs three successive mm. times. So it will be a difficult trip. Like I said, I've made the trip to work. I've made the trip to Workington a few times myself. And it is a difficult place yeah, to get to. It's not motorways. But I also think if Workington can sort of make the home a fortress. I mean, it's not a nice place to go, as we say. If they can sort of win a lot of their home games, that's going to be, that's a fantastic boost for them. Yeah, I, I see them challenging for a playoff spot again. I think they're quite a big club in the Evo Stick Premier Division. Uh, they're in the National League North not too long ago. Mm. Went up there, went to Stockport. Uh, we're playing in Conference North first season about four years yeah. ago, five years ago. Um, so I am surprised to see them in the Evo Stick Premier Division. I expect them to be challenging. So we'll move to the Evo Stick First Division North now and talk about Hyde United who extended their unbeaten league run with an emphatic 5-1 victory over Brighouse Town and we were discussing sort of in the week if Hyde would be distracted by this FA Cup run but Mark that isn't the case. No, 5-1. You'd think they might take it a little bit easy looking ahead to this FA Cup game but 5-1 says it all really doesn't it? Well I mean are players competing for places are they putting them, trying to put themselves in the shop window well, to play in that FA Cup We game? said last week didn't we that we thought some players might take it a little bit easy to avoid picking up injuries but 5-1 victory against Brighouse Town not a chance prioritising the competition it's great to see obviously play for the place as well they all yeah. want to start in that Friday night game against MK Dons well apparently Darren Kelly is issuing fines to any players that mention the FA Cup so uh, it's working them in the place isn't fantastic it? yeah 
Well, on Tuesday, Hyde's fixture at Kendall Town was postponed due to a waterlogged pitch. This weekend, they're back in action at Gill, who are currently bottom of the Evo Stick First Division North. But Hyde uh, shouldn't underestimate them, Lee. No, you've got to take them seriously. These are the banana skin games, aren't they? I mean, bottom of the table, they're not playing well. It'd be very easy for Hyde to go there, feel the weakened team ahead of this big fixture and lose a scrappy 1-0 game or something like that. Hyde can't, Hyde can't afford that at the minute. Mm. They're not top of the table purely because they've played less games than everyone else. Yep. But if they win all these games in hand, they'll be right up there. And I think they should be aiming for automatic promotion, not just playoffs. Absolutely. You can't take your foot off the gas at this point in the season, especially against bottom club Gould. But like Tom said then, you can't underestimate them because they came from two goals behind to claim a 2 all draw against Droylston. What mm. was it, three weeks ago? Yeah, not so long ago. Yeah. Well, we're at the Butcher's Arm, so we'll talk about Droylston, who got back to winning ways with a 2-0 victory over Osset Albion last weekend. They'd gone four games without a win before yeah. that, Mark, so good to get back to winning ways. Great to get back to winning ways, and I think when you've gone on a winless run like that, you might be thinking, oh, when are we going to pick up our next victory? But a 2-0 victory over Rosset Albion, the third time they beat that side yeah. this season. Like playing so, Albion. yeah, why can't they play them every week? I'm sure <laughs> they'd love to, wouldn't they? Well, this weekend, Droylston travelled to Osset Town in the FA Trophy, and we, Osset are in a similar position to Droylston, so it's a good chance for the Bloods to progress. Yeah, I mean, I think they're just two points behind above Droylston, are yeah. they, sorry? So it's a perfect chance for them to leapfrog them this uh, this weekend, you know. Droylston, they went through a bit of a, a poor patch, yeah, a little we'll sticky say. patch, yeah. a little sticky patch in the past couple of weeks. They've won now, now it's time to build on that, get a few more points and push themselves back up to the top of the table. And obviously, once again, FA Trophy, £3,250 up for grabs. I'm sure Dave Pace would love that money. So finally, we'll talk about Mosley, who suffered late heartbreak at home to South Shields last weekend. Mosley were 1-0 up going into the 87th minute, but goals from Hilly Oaka and Jamie Holmes stole the points for the away side. 72 hours later, Mosley were held to a 0-0 draw at Radcliffe Borough. So, Mark, we'll talk about that South Shields game. First of all, really heartbreaking for the Lily Whites. Heartbreaking, but I'm going to take the positives from it. I see South Shields claiming the title mm. quite comfortably this season, so for Mosley to push them all the way and then just concede those two goals very late on was heartbreaking, but you've got to take the positives. Just, just Sorry, just an interesting thing. We've, we've spoken before on the show about South Shields and their incredible you know, like attendances that yeah. they get in this division. I thought a few more might have travelled to Mosley. Mm. Didn't seem to put that many on the Quite game. Quite a trip, though, to be fair. Yeah, just above yeah, Allen. I, I wouldn't blame them, but I did yeah. think there'd be more coming to the Seal, seal Park. Just, just above 200, was it? 237 yeah. around online, like that, something yeah. like that. I was expecting more, uh, like you said, then. Not great, is it's, it? It's a bit of a shame, but I mean, yeah. Mosley, Mosley are doing well with the crowds yeah. that they're getting. So, well, Hilly Owaka, former, well, still a legend in the North East, former yeah. Premier League player with Sunderland and Middlesbrough, now doing the business at this level for South Shields. What about this? Just goes to show his love for the game. From the Stadium of Light to Seal Park. <laughs> still got a love for the game, as you said, then. Absolutely. You can't go from those stadiums to Seal Park, drop all those divisions, unless you've got a love for the game. I think it's great to see. Mm -hmm. Well, this weekend, Mosley are in FA Trophy action, like the rest of our sides. They're against Lancaster City of the Evo Stick Premier Division and we mostly tend to like being the underdogs so they'll, uh, they'll relish this game should, on Saturday. I mean they should relish this. Lancaster promoted last year. They're a, they're a team on the rise I'd say. They're doing yeah. things the right way, yeah. building a good club and the financial implications of the FA Trophy which we keep mm. saying. I know some people might get bored about us talking about money on a football show but at this level it is crucial. Yeah, I mean you huge. can see the investment that Curzon Ashton got last year from their FA Cup run. That was integral to what they've started this year so a little bit of injection of money into the yeah. coffers can help. The money is massively important at this point of the season, especially going towards Christmas. Crowds will naturally drop because finances are tight at home, buying presents and all that kind of stuff. And if you're doing poor in the league as well, attendances will drop on top of that. So to bring in money from the FA Trophy, a massive bonus. And it's also, I'm sorry, sorry to interject no. again, the money you get, if you're sort of in a promotion push, if you can sign a star striker on a few hundred quid a week and he can push it to promotion, mm. the money you get from that is going gonna, is gonna to build your club up. And obviously, if you do embark on an FA Trophy run, a player will want to come because they're thinking, I'm one step closer to getting to Wembley. Get to Wembley, yeah. Wembley. Yeah. Well, good luck to all our sides in FA Trophy action this week. That's all we've got time for. But don't forget, for a more in-depth roundup of all the sports across the borough, you can tune into the Sporting Spotlight tonight on Tameside Radio with myself, Lee, Mark and Adam. <laughs>